Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is the Ultimate Unity Tutorial and welcome to episode 5. So this time we're going to look at some UI elements, so we're going to look at a cursor for our screen and we're also going to look at something called Raycast. Now, some people may have heard of Raycast before but aren't too sure what it is or how it works and if you haven't heard of it then don't worry, I'll explain everything. So let's start off with a simple cursor for our screen. At the moment, when we press play, we can't really define where we're looking exactly. We know roughly where our character is looking, but we need to kind of have that focus of where we actually are. So this can be done really, really simply. If we go to game object and go down here to UI and then over to raw image, you'll notice in the hierarchy, it creates a couple of things. It'll create a canvas. It'll create the raw image we've created and an event system. I'm not going to go into too much detail about some of these because they're kind of irrelevant at the moment. The idea is though, the canvas, if we double click it, represents the entire screen. And you can see that this white line here is the actual canvas itself. Now the canvas overlays everything that we build in our scene. So for example, if we press play now, we can see that in the center of our screen is that raw image that we've just created. And if we press escape and go over to the inspector panel, make sure canvas is selected here, we can actually turn it off and it will disappear. Same applies for everything that is within the canvas. If we untick this, it takes it away. And we can use that to our advantage later on in development because UI becomes quite useful in many ways more than you think. So let's double click our raw image. Let's right click and let's rename it to main cursor. Now what we can do with this is we have a couple of options. We obviously want it centered, but if we click here on this little anchor icon here, we can set it to anchor its position to anywhere on the screen. Now what this means is by default, when it starts up, it will bring itself, for example, if we click this, 664 pixels from the left, always. Again, if we do it from the right, it'll do 664 pixels from the right. Same applies pretty much anywhere. And obviously, if we can stretch one way or the other, it'll always appear in the same sort of position. But we need it dead center. We always need this to appear in the center. And we can just do this, which means it'll always appear in position X and Y, 0, 0. So we can click this, then click off. Next thing, we have the width and the height. Now, what I'd like to do with this is have it kind of um, maybe a diamond shape. So we could always rotate if we wanted to. So I'm gonna have this as let's say width of about four and height of about four. And if I press play, should be able to see how that looks on the screen. So for me, I think that looks pretty much spot on. That's about the size I would expect. So obviously when we play this game in full screen, i.e. 1080p, we should be able to see well, it perfectly. And obviously if we double click again, we can zoom in, see it a little bit more. So if we want, we could rotate. And we can rotate on the X, Y, or Z, but you've got to logically think about this, that rotating on some axis isn't going to make much of a difference because we're working in a 2D environment technically with the canvas. So I'm going to rotate on the Z by 45 degrees to give it, well, a diamond shape. And let's see how that looks in game. So I think I quite like that. It's simple, it's easy, and it gets the point. It's perfect for now. Obviously, we can advance this more and more as we go along. And um, what I intend to do is make like a dynamic UI um, cursor eventually, but we'll move on to that. Down here, we can set a texture if we wanted to. There's no real texture we could use at the moment, but the idea is you can use these textures. For example, by default, Unity has these ones down here, and you could use that if you wanted to at this point. So it would be a circle to tally up to you. But for now, I'm gonna leave no texture. But just to give you the idea of what would happen, if you select these textures, you can see what's happening here. So I'm going to keep it as none. I just want it white for now. Speaking of white, you can also change the color and the alpha. So if we wanted maybe a blue uh, cursor, which was slightly see-through, 
we could do that. Set the alpha lower, press play, and we could see it. So it's all about the style you want to go for. It's how you want your game to look. These are all the options you have, and it's down to you to work that out. So next thing we're going to do is something called Raycast. Now, if I double click on my first person controller here, back down to the ground, and a raycast is a way of defining how far away an object is from the object it's looking at. So a good example of this would be, if we press play, we want to determine how far away our player is from that wall in how, whatever measurements you consider that to be in, whether it's meters, feet, whatever. Now, to do that, it is a relatively simple script but the script itself can be modified quite intensely and it should be referenced in different scripts as well. I like to keep a standard when it comes to ray casting, so I like to call it player casting because it's easier for me to reference that from any kind of tutorial project to do or any game project. So we're going to do just that. Right click, create, C sharp script, and let's call it player casting. And let's open it up. In Visual Studio. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we're going to work on the same principle as we've done with our other script. Obviously we've been through a bit of C Sharp and we can remember here that the public class is where we need to contain all of our relevant information. So within the public class here again we need to set two variables. Let's clear everything we don't need. We don't need start and we don't need any notes. So we're going to use something called a static variable. So if we type public static, now the word static means that this particular variable can be referenced from different scripts. So as this um, raycast is working, it's doing its magic, it's checking where we are. At that same time, we can reference whatever it's outputting from a different script. So that's why we use the word static. If we didn't have the word static, no other script would be able to reference this variable except the one that it's written in. So we're going to have it as a float. And I'm going to call it distance from target, semicolon. Obviously, the semicolon ends that line. Now we need to do another float to say to target. The reason I have this is because I always like to have internal versions. Now what I mean by that is because we have the word static here, it doesn't appear as a variable within the inspector panel. Now if we go to our gem rotate, you can see we have these variables right here. We have three of them. And if we go to our actual gem, we can see we have the three variables here. So when it's static, it means that it does not appear here, but I still like to know what value that is. So I do that by having an internal version. And I'm just gonna call this one to target. So essentially what's happening is we're gonna make distance from target and to target the same number. Public float to target, semicolon. And Within the void update, we're going to have a non-public um, variable, which is going to be used for the raycast itself. And that has to be defined as type raycast hit. So raycast hit and the name, we're just going to call it hit, semicolon. Now, this is where it gets a little bit not tricky, but maybe a little bit complicated and difficult to understand at first, but it makes sense in the end. So what we need to do is we need to kind of send out a signal from whatever object this is attached to an output to the hit variable, which is this. So we need to go if, and in brackets, we do physics dot raycast. So you can see what's happening here. This is where we're using the raycast. And we transform the position. So transform dot position. So you have to make sure that they are lowercase t, lowercase p, because remember coding is case sensitive, comma. And then we need to transform the direction 
forward. So we have to make sure that it's pointing forward, not off to the left, not off to the right, not behind, definitely forward. And to do that, we do transform dot transform direction. And that's all one word, but make sure here that transform, the first bit, is a lowercase t, but then transform direction is uppercase t, uppercase d. That is important. And in brackets, we need to say forward, and we do that using a vector 3. A vector 3 is kind of a way of defining the world itself, because we're doing it in a 3D environment. So vector 3 dot forward, and then close bracket, comma, and then the word out, O-U-T, because this is what we're outputting to, and it's going to output to this variable. So hit, then close bracket, close bracket, and open curly bracket. And now you'll see it automatically gives us the closed curly bracket. So this is our if statement to say, yep, this we're pointing this direction. This is what we're outputting to, the hit. So once we've done that, we make to target equals hit dot distance semicolon. So what's happening here is when we define how far away we are from looking forward, so we're looking at any object in front of us, we're going to make to target this variable equals to how far away we are. So we've got our internal version of our number. We now need to make our external version equal to the same number, which is this distance from target. Distance from target equals, and at this point you can either put to target or hit dot distance. It's up to you. I'm just going to do to target semicolon because by this point it's the same number anyways, hit dot distance. So let's save that script there and let's head back into Unity. It's just thinking about it down here in the right corner. Perfect. No errors. So if we go to our first person controller, double click, and let's expand it out a little and right click and let's create a empty game object. And then let's attach player casting to game object. Now let's press play and see what happens. So you can see as we walk towards this wall, the two target number is getting lower and lower. And you can see we're right up against the wall and it's pretty low indeed. So just to make sure we're looking at the right thing here, it's this number to target that we're looking at. And do you remember me saying that the distance from target won't appear? Well, that's what I mean. It does not appear here, but we still like to know how far away for debugging reasons or testing reasons. So this is the reason why I have this to target. But you can see this working in action. You can see how far away we are from things. And it's quite useful. So depending on um, how you want your game to play, it may be best to either have your uh, player casting on the FPS controller or on the first person character. Now I'm gonna try dragging it to the first person character and if I just make sure we are facing the right way. Um, in fact, I'm going to rotate 180 degrees so we face outwards. I'm going to take the game object and just bring it forward slightly and press play again. Now the reason I do this is because we don't want the player getting in the way of our casting. And you'll notice now that we can actually raycast with the floor, whereas previously we couldn't. So it's the idea of getting the hierarchy correct. So it still works just fine. See how far away we are from the wall? That works perfect. Same with the gem and the floor. So I think it's best to keep it on the first person character. So I'm going to right click, rename, and I'm just going to call it player casting object. It'll become relevant um, well from the next tutorial to be honest. So there's a lot to get your head around here with Raycast, especially if you are an absolute beginner to this. 
But what I do say is never be afraid to try things out. Never be afraid to work around things, play with things and see what you come up with. So next episode, we're going to look at interactions involving Raycast and how buttons can produce um, an action. So for example, rather than use an actual UI button to do things, we can have, let's say, we walk up to this gem and we have a prompt on screen to say, take gem. So we're going to look at that sort of interactions, i.e. open something if we're close enough. So I'd also like to get uh, to grips with dynamic UI at that point as well. So for example, if we're looking at this gem, we have some extra crosshairs around to say, you know, kind of think of like um, something like Skyrim or Fallout, anything like that, where you look at something and the cursor in the middle kind of expands a little bit. If you don't know what I mean, go take a look at uh, something by Bethesda, I guess, because that's the example I can think of right now. But yeah, I'd like that's dynamic UI and I'd like to do that in the next episode. So guys, until then, thank you very much for watching.